Now, in my five minutes, I probably won't even need five minutes because I think I'll um, weave some of this stuff into the debates. But in my five minutes, I will say a little bit about my stance, but also a little bit about my position and where I come from. So I set up Inspire Engage International in 2009, but that was after 11 years of volunteering. If any of you are um, students or you're venturing into a new idea of social enterprise, I would definitely, uh, if you're at the start of it, would advise you to go and do some volunteering, get involved, get an insight and build your experience and also your kind of uh, real kind of um, understanding of the complexity of the world that you want to operate in and the world you want to change, whatever your issue, your social mission is. And I got the opportunity to do that since the age of 13. I was actually born in Iran and um, I'm still not a British national. I'm an immigrant in this country. I was a war refugee to Sweden. I grew up there and then moved here when I was 13 years old. I couldn't speak English properly and used to actually sit in the House of Parliament and discuss petition and frameworks and all of what became the UK Youth Parliament. UK Youth Parliament, which I was a trustee for, made history being the first female and the first ethnic minority to be trustee of that, was the reason why travel became free for 16 and under year olds in London, as well as sex and relationship education became compulsory in schools and a lot of other issues that we campaigned and advocated with a bunch of really um, lovely people that we worked with. Um, in 2009, I, I did a law degree, I'm a law graduate, but I decided if I had spent doing something for free for so many years with such a passion and had built up actually really good skills relating to engagement in campaigning in passion and all of these things and engaging people, that should be my career. And I'm a very accidental uh, social entrepreneur, I would say. And what we do, Inspire Engage International, is that with all the opportunities in the world, if you say young people can do this, young people can do that, or you sell a vision to them, they're still sitting there thinking, how? How do I do that? What, where do I start? And I think that every journey isn't just about your destination. It's really about starting here. And when I say here, it's looking at yourself and looking at how you can change your skills and your mindset to then go and tackle whatever your social mission is. So what Inspire Engage International does is we help you to do that. We have devised um, really innovative shock tactic skills boot camps that we've delivered in over 100 countries in the world that allow people to go on that journey to be very clear about what they then are going to do about their social mission. And we run three different programs. One of them is in 2013, we um, launched um, the first hands-on um, social enterprise program embedded into the curriculum. When we say embedded into the curriculum, we don't teach it and it's not a qualification. I'll give you an example. Um, we ran one in Solihull with one of the colleges there and let's say Johnny in construction he studies construction he has skills to fix something we partnered with the local police the local police said here are vulnerable people who just need something fixing Johnny goes and fixes it uses his skills and when he fixes something and uses his skills it's assessed as part of the curriculum but he makes a few quid off it and he makes a difference and that's what we believe is the future of the education world there certainly should be a thread in there that does that so that people develop skills, make money, so we close the gap on unemployment, but they're making a difference. Why can't they make learning real? And that's one of the programs that we run. The second program that we run is Primary Revolution for the age group 4 to 11, and it's the same thing but in primary schools. And I haven't got time to go into detail, but it's incredible, uh, probably the most fun I've ever had. Where we probably have the highest social return is uh, our program called Startup and Stilettos, The Future is Female. And that is where we work with vulnerable women who've been victims of lots of different things like domestic violence. We had women who were you know, ex-offenders, um, running from lots of different issues, very, very complex personal issues. And people said, oh, you work with disadvantaged women. I was like, we were talking about this earlier, and I was like, no, actually, when it comes to social enterprise, they are advantaged in dealing with this issue. Don't tell me you can come up with a better program to help women from domestic violence if you've never even witnessed it or been through it yourself. And so when it comes to those social issues, they are advantaged. So what our program does is enable them to develop their confidence and skills and understanding about social enterprise and become economically active in, through social enterprise. And my mom said, well, Melody, why don't you continue focusing on young people? Because then you can make a difference earlier on. And I said to her, mom, every woman who comes on our program has two, three children. And what we're doing 
is supporting the women, the community, but also those children. And he has a huge social value. So that's what Inspire Engage International does. I do a lot of public speaking. We do a lot of, I'm on, last night did my London tour of, London stop of our talk, How to Change the World. And so we share a lot of this kind of learning, particularly for young people, on how they can do that as well. My stance on this is really, really simple. If you're a genuine social entrepreneur, yes, everybody should become social entrepreneurs, absolutely. If you're not a genuine social entrepreneur, you're not doing it for your social mission, then don't be a social entrepreneur and don't change our sector into a greedy sector like the rest of the world used to be. And it's as simple as that. So if you're part of that, have that vision, you can, you can really make a difference, then great, please come and look at social enterprise as a great model for creating change. If you don't do that and you want to change this and we have an influx of people who think social enterprise is super sexy, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and do it, then please don't come and, and do that and you know, ruin something great that we're helping to build.